Coming up on show 882, Elon Musk says the Berlin Gigafactory will make revolutionary Model Ys. Stick around, I'll tell you more. On the podcast today, GM and Honda forming an alliance for EVs, Neo setting some monthly sales records, and why batteries are a big deal for some big car makers. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily for what happened on Thursday, 3rd of September. Uh, My name is Martin Lee. I go through every EV story so you don't have to. As you can hear by now, I am (laughs) well over the cold. Um, I just basically laid low for a couple of days and took things easy. That was a bit of a stinker, but thank you for your best wishes that you emailed in and contact me and uh, a few few homebrew solutions as well to uh, to clear up the old throat that was struggling. Uh, So let's kick off with this big story about Elon Musk today saying the Berlin Gigafactory is going to make revolutionary Model Ys. Uh, They're going to make the redesigned Model Y at their first European factory. Elon Musk said he's been in Germany. He flew in on the private Musk plane the SpaceX jets, and uh, I'd heard this story before. It was either on an earnings call or something, or he tweeted it. I, I forget now, but Elon had previously said that the Model Y that you see coming out of Berlin will look the same as the regular Model Y made in America, but underneath, it'll be completely different. Now, it must have been on like an earnings call or something, because it was... There was so much news around at the time that I think that I think that story got buried. Like I don't think anyone kind of realised how important it was when he said that a few weeks, months ago, whenever that was. I'll try and dig out the uh, the I'll, I'll search online for the actual quote. But now he's come to Germany and said it again to in a kind of informal, impromptu press conference and. Uh, an event later this month, Battery Day, 22nd of September, we'll find out more about their battery plans. As for the Model Y made in, in Berlin, in Germany, well, the factory is still under construction, but it's going up at a real rate of knots. The most advanced paint shop, Elon says, in the world. Uh, new batteries, well, new cells being made in Germany, and they'll be made into batteries, of course. And plus, Tesla saying to reporters that when he visited the site... Uh, today that the Model Y will be the first car coming out of Gigafactory in Berlin. They'll make almost 500,000 cars at that site eventually. That's peak capacity. It underlines how important the European market is uh, to Elon Musk and to Tesla, and he's said forever, really, that the plan is always to have, to begin with, Gigafactories on every continent and then to make the cars as close as possible to where the customers are buying them. And, you know, they, they, they could, by the end of next year, with Berlin, with Texas, with Shanghai, and, of course, um, with original uh, Fremont facility, I, I guess like 1.3 to 1.5 million cars next year in 2021. Uh, that's that. They're on target for that. That's not a pie in the sky number. They could do half a million this year with COVID uh, shutting them down for seven weeks earlier in the year. Uh, so the factory at Berlin is slated to make customer cars by summer next year, but they'll be making some pre-production and some some cars pretty soon. Actually, as soon as they can physically get those buildings done. What do we reckon? Elon was talking about then when it will be revolutionary. Well, many people are saying that actually the you know the world's biggest casting uh, machine for a, a car part is going to be installed there. So the whole single the whole back end of the car, rather than being hundreds of parts bolted together, will be a single cast part. That's pretty much on the cards. Uh, you know, I've wondered for a long time. I mean, when I first started looking at EVs years ago, and then I I kind of found out that they still have a lead acid a twelve volt less at lead ad, lead acid battery under the bonnet like well hang on i'm sitting on a massive 400 volt battery underneath my backside why do evs still have car batteries that you have to replace every three years um and that's for things like the lighting that's just for a 12 volt circuit but of course you have to do you have to have more cabling and thicker cables and uh, due to resistance that's for things like lighting and, and and to run the car but not actually move the car well actually You know, if you move that to a, say, a 48-volt system, so you eliminate, what if you eliminated the the, the 12-volt battery from a car? You'd run it on a 48-volt system. The wires, the wiring loom can be smaller, run it at a higher voltage. So that's a possibility. I don't think Elon's not said that. It's just a possibility. Uh, You could perhaps have the wiring loom loom as a hub. So, like, you know, just link the front and back of the car, maybe even, I don't know, like a network cable or something, I don't know. But so many things that you could do to make a car more simple in terms of production and how it's made as well. But I come back to that quote that he said, 
that I picked on, up on uh, you know weeks and months ago that the Model Y will look the same on the outside, the ones that are made in the US, but the European-made ones underneath, they'll be totally different. And how do you feel about that? If you're one of my American listeners, maybe you've bought one or you've got a Model Y on order. Like, how do you feel? Like, do you feel that you're, you're buying version 1.0 and that actually in a few months' time, there's going to be version 2.0, which sort of makes your car a bit old, a bit obsolete, but you can't even buy it in North America? Or do you feel like the way I feel about this? Not that you asked. um, The way I feel about this is Elon is treating cars much like tech. Like if you buy a new phone, sooner or later, there'll be a, a, a next great phone and you're left with last year's model. If you are into building PCs or modding, like I, you, like I, I've just built myself a new Ryzen Seven machine, but that is, you know, hardly cutting edge. It's it's good. It's good for video and sound editing, but it's not, you know, it's not a four grand PC. Um, and like I, that's kind of that's kind of where I live now. But going back, I used to always be about building the latest greatest PC. But the second that you install that part, there's a better sound card out. There's a better graphics card coming out. And that's kind of how Elon is with cars, I think, or, or just with technology. Like, he's making cars more like computers. Like, I think the minute you buy one, there's going to be a new one out from Tesla that you want. So, ah, get used to it, maybe. All right, I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to read more about that story. It's a big story today, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. That's been our main topic Today, what do you think Elon means when he says that the Model Y will be revolutionary? I'd love to hear from you. Let's move on. Tesla and BMW amongst the big winners in Germany. And the German car market down 20%. New car sales in Germany falling 20% last month in August. Uh, About 250,000 vehicles sold, according to the transport authority there. But the major brands that did well, BMW, yep, Nissan, yep, and Tesla. Well, Nissan's up 14%, BMW's up 15%, and Tesla's up 454%. A good month for Tesla. Uh, 16,000 EVs sold. Tesla's sales were 2846 last month, about 20%, about a fifth of the EV market in Germany in August. Okay, Tasmanian pointing out that although Tesla's sales in Germany were weak in July, sales in August and September are compensating. So far, September's got off to a good start. The first month of the quarter is always a slow one, uh, weakest one for Tesla. It's, you know, and obviously the cars aren't made here. So the cars are put onto ships and sailed halfway around the world. And if some of the ships don't arrive during the, a few weeks of a month, of course, you're going to get bad monthly figures. Doesn't mean that nobody wants to buy those cars anymore. And as we start into the second half of the uh, of the quarter, deliveries always climb substantially. And more likely, the data for September is going to be very, very high. And they'll get those cars delivered by the end of the quarter. End of quarter rush is a usual thing for Tesla. And so I expect those numbers to be very, very high for September. Okay. Shall we talk Lucid next? All right. Lucid Motors revealed details about their in-house, very proprietary technology, the electric drivetrain powering the pure electric Lucid Air. It's the first car coming from Lucid, but we know there's going to be more, like an SUV, uh, like a truck. And it's going to become an instant class leader in a number of key metrics and efficiency as well. So the architecture itself is an ultra-high over 900-volt system. And again, that doesn't... You know, you can have great 400-volt systems like like Tesla. And there's 800-volt systems like the Porsche Taycan. Um, it, there's some efficiency gains there when you're charging very quickly. Lucid, 900 volts plus. I think like the high 900s, actually. And they are combining that with an onboard charging unit. Now, the onboard charging unit Lucid have designed, they put a picture out today. It sits behind the front axle. Um, I think, you know, sort of where your hand would rest to do the infotainment system, maybe, if that's, I'm trying to explain it in audio form, of where this sits inside the front of the car. They've called it the Wonder Box. I love that, because they didn't need to call it the Wonder Box. It's just, a, it's just the inverter. It does a few things, but I love it. They've given it a name, and they've called it the Wonder Box. It does a few things, multifunction unit, all developed in-house by Lucid. This isn't off, off the parts of bin of another car manufacturer. Um, they've designed it all themselves. It manages the charging. It also 
uh, looks after the efficiency of how the car is running, and it means that when you connect to a DC fast charger like Electrify America that's 350 kilowatts, you do get that 20-minute charge and 300 miles of range added, which is great. You know, 20 minutes is park up, plug in, walk in to get a coffee, use the services, the restroom, have a snack, get the kids back in the car on a road trip, and there's 300 miles added in 20 minutes. That's deeply, deeply impressive. But the Wonderbox does more. It's bi-directional. And so, again, it's the first car on the market not using Chadamo. That means you can do V to G, so vehicle to grid. So you can manage your home power outage. You can do uh, V to V, like vehicle to vehicle. So you could actually have roadside assistance buying a fleet of Lucid Airs and rescuing other EV owners. I mean, I've never run out of power myself. I don't know anyone that has the run out of power. But you know, I guess people run out of petrol. And if it happens, if you run out of electricity, somebody can zoom up in their lucid air, plug your car into their car, and bosh, leave it a little while, and you've got some juice to get you to the next charger. Uh, the, the vehicle to home stuff is really interesting, because not just because of power outages. I haven't had a power cut in years, but I gather there's pl- parts of the world where power cuts are more, you know, uh, more regular. But the battery in this is so big that, you know, I wouldn't want to do vehicle to grid with my car because it's a 42 kilowatt hour pack. This is a 113 kilowatt hour battery pack. And so even if you plugged it into your house overnight where you did your washing, put the dishwasher on and, uh, you know, the tumble dryer and run your house off your car, even if you used five to 10 kilowatt hours, you can still get to work the next day. So and maybe at work, you've got free charging. Hey, I'm just saying that, you know, Persuade the boss to put charges in at work. Little perk for the uh, uh, the workers. Charge your car up all day. Go home. Plug it into your house. Do all your do all your jobs. Heat your hot water, and uh, you're saving some money. I'll pop a link in the show notes to that story. I was being cheeky, but you know you could. All uh, right, okay. Let's move on. And next, let's talk Honda and GM. They're forming an alliance to share EV tech. Honda and General Motors moving closer together. The two Goliaths signed a memorandum of understanding today uh, for an alliance in North America. Earlier this year, we knew that Honda were borrowing some GM tech, and now it's a more formal arrangement uh, to cement the two companies together. Says Autoblog. Uh, as of now, the uh, pro- proposed alliance would have two collaborating. Uh, teams on electric technology, you know, two minds better than one. Internal combustion engines also get a look in here, uh, but also vehicle platforms and connected services, purchasing and, and general R&D, Honda and GM working together to collaborate uh, for the advancement of electric vehicles to try and make their EVs more profitable and digging into the technology announcement today, things like EV architecture systems, uh, ADAS, so advanced driver assistance systems, uh, infotainment, connectivity and uh, vehicle to everything communication. I'll pop a link to also blog in the show notes for you to read more. Neo is on a roll right now. 4,000 cars a month in August and 5,000 is the target. Neo maintains their momentum for yet another month, achieving monthly sales in China, of course, Chinese company, uh, with the third best a month, I think, for them, the company delivered about 4,000 of their ES6 and ES8 cars in August. A uh, huge increase on the same time uh, last year. The next target is for 5,000 cars a month. Uh, Neo has sold so far this year 17,000 of the ES6 and 4,500 of the ES8. Uh, the Neo network, they've got 151 stores in operation now. And uh, in 91 cities across China and 145 of those uh, battery swapping stations. So uh, that's a big thing for Neo, big thing in China, big for people who live in multi-occupancy dwellings that can't have charging at home. So they, you know, they, it's, it's becoming more the norm in China where you, you can't charge your car or, or opportunity charging is rare. So you end up using battery swaps and that takes like five to seven minutes or so. You pull into one of their stations and... A uh, little sled comes out under your car, down comes the battery, up goes a new one, fully charged, and of course, that means they can, when they take the battery out of your car, look at it, look at the state of health, uh, make sure the cells are good, take any out of rotation that, that need repairing, and so you've always got the best of the best battery in your car, you have to worry about that, and they use the same dimensions for the pack size as efficiency, as cell technology improves, so as batteries get bigger, they're keeping it in the same physical dimensions, and so... You know, one day you might have a 70 kilowatt hour pack and then in a couple of years time you get a 90 kilowatt hour pack, you go further. So battery swapping has many advantages. Tesla tried it, didn't work. But uh, in China, uh, culturally different 
it is becoming more uh, the norm with Neo. Hey, on Saturday, I am looking forward to joining up with a podcast that I've listened to for a couple of years now because Brian McCullough with the Tech Meme Ride Home does it with his podcast, what I try and do with this one. But I want to stay in touch with technology. I want to know what the big Silicon Valley giants are doing, what the latest tech is that I need to know about, whether it's AR or VR or AI. I want to know the headlines and I want to get some commentary. I want to get tweets in from their, their listeners. I want to be part of that conversation, but I don't want to like search the tech blogs for hours. I haven't got time for that. So that's exactly what Brian does with the tech meme ride home. Tens of thousands of people listen every day for exactly that reason. I should be on, I think if, if everything aligns this Saturday, uh, talking to their audience about the general state of electric vehicles. And, uh, you know, if you have any feedback about that show, let me know. You can, of course, listen to the Tech Meme Ride Home podcast now. Open up your podcast app on your favorite platform. Just search Ride Home. You'll find Brian's show and you can subscribe and stay in touch. All right, Mercedes-Benz are next in the news, and they are unveiling their seventh-generation S-Class today. Uh, the best car in the world, according to many, at any point in time. Uh, but the best version of the best car is the Mercedes Maybach uh, S650 sedan, currently powered by a V12. But Mercedes-Benz CEO said today that the future Maybachs, which really are the best of the best, uh, a car that I'm guessing you and I probably can't afford, um, are going electric. Which makes more sense, according to Jalopnik, when you think about it. It's interesting that we've reached a point where we're going electric, not because it's the right thing to do for the planet, because CEOs of big automakers and high-end electric cars say that they can make money from that. And also it avoids emissions regulations, particularly in Europe. And also in China, they want to buy electric cars. And also... It's just better. Like, if you have a Maybach, you're not driving that yourself. You have someone to drive that for you. And what do you want to do? You want to be ferried around in luxury. You want to, you know what? You want to waft. You want to waft places. And as good as silky smooth these, VW, these uh, V12s are, it's not the same as being powered by electric. It's quiet. You haven't got a sound deaden the car. There's no sound to deaden, apart from keeping, you know the general public outside with the double glazed, triple glazed windows. And so electric is quieter. It's more smooth. It's more refined. And actually, electric power for high-end cars, whether that's supercars or, or cars like the Maybach, just make more sense on every single level. These cars are huge. They can fit massive battery packs. The range is going to be enormous on them. Well done, Mercedes Maybach. A group PSA is next in the news. And I'm going to finish off with a couple of battery stories today because yesterday I was telling you about how Ford say the way forward is not to have a cell-making facility. Like Tesla are going to announce on battery day in a couple of weeks' time. Ford were saying there's no point doing that. Now, they were saying it's because they can source the cells from elsewhere, go to the general market. But of course... Unless you've got those battery supply contracts, you know, they were saying it's, it's good to shop around and get the best deal. Like, that's not how you get the best deal in battery supply contracts. You have them tied up for years, and you have exclusivity, and you have access to the best technology. If you just become another, another customer walking in off the street looking for a deal, looking for a bargain, looking for a bit of negotiation, that's not how battery supply contracts work. But hey, I'm not, who am I to tell Ford how to run their business? Um, but it's interesting that the other car companies don't feel that way. So, first of all, there's Group PSA, Peugeot, Citroen, Opel, etc. And Total, yes, the oil company, uh, they've signed an agreement for the, to create a new joint venture and a. they say they want to be a world-class cell maker for the automotive industry to make their own battery cells. And by 2023, they want to respond to the challenges of this energy transition. So, so Group PSA want to make their own cells and Total want to get out of the oil business and start making batteries for cars. They want to produce batteries for EVs at the highest technological level. And they know that they can't go to the general market for that because they'll never get the best and greatest technology, so they're going to make their own in terms of performance, autonomy, recharging time. They want to get their own R&D done and lead their way. Uh, they want to develop production capacity, and that's essential, they say. They say it's essential for the growth demand, the plans that they have for their EVs. Uh, they want uh, to make hundreds of gigawatt hours 
per year of cells. They want to ensure independence in Europe uh, in terms of the battery supplies. Uh, an initial, you know, when, it, when the factory opens, it'll be making eight gigawatt hours. It's a gigafactory, eight gigawatt hours of cells a, a year. But that will be going up to 48 gigawatt hours on both the sites they're looking at. And that's about a million, depending on how big the batteries are, a million EVs a year. And their eyes are on the future of having control over who makes the cells themselves. And from that story to this one, VW are backing a US battery maker called QuantumScape. Uh, QuantumScape is a 10-year-old Silicon Valley battery startup backed by Volkswagen, and they're going public through a reverse merger uh, with an acquisition company, the SPACs that have been talked about loads lately, and uh, especially in the EV space as well. All right, I'm going to do 20 seconds on what a SPAC is, uh, because it's half interesting. You do an IPO and uh, you float. You, you publicly list a company that, at that point, is simply people putting money in. So people invest in the company, and then they've got, I think, it's two or three years to find another company to merge with and invest in. So you have a publicly listed company that is just an investment vehicle. That money's put into trust, and then you don't have any say over the company they find. Anyway. So this particular SPAC has found QuantumScape, a battery company, and then they merge, and then QuantumScape gets a, a shortcut, a fast track to be a publicly listed company, uh, making cells solid state battery cells, solid state battery cells for VW's EVs by 2024. And maybe other car makers, but I think VW will gobble them all up uh, themselves. And their other investors are VW in China, uh, Continental. Uh, the lithium metal battery uses a solid ceramic electrolyte, which is safer than a liquid electrolyte, and eliminates the need for an anode. So the battery will charge more quickly, um, sometimes 80% in 15 minutes, and it's more energy dense, um, exceeding 400 watt hours per kilogram. Current Levels are about 250 watt-hours per kilogram for lithium-ion batteries. Expect some update from Elon Musk soon on Battery Day on that. But uh, I'll pop a link to the sh in the show notes to that story. And that's your show for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, you can hear... <clears throat> Just starting to lose it after talking out loud for 20 odd minutes. And so that's a good place to stop. I'm obviously not back to 100% uh, just yet. But thank you for listening and thank you for your support as well. You know, if you want to get any of the sh previous shows, 881 shows in the archive, if, you, if you've learned something today, like if you've been entertained or you've picked up something that you found interesting, uh, do consider supporting the show on Patreon because it's the only way uh, that I get to earn money from this podcast and make it happen. Uh, and it's not the cheapest thing to produce when you've got almost a thousand shows in the archive. Uh, but I, I would invite you to have a look at the page, which is uh, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash uh, EV News Daily. Uh, Patreon.com is just uh, just like they just facilitate people to support creators. They do all the credit card stuff and it's all secure and I don't see that. I just know that you've signed up. I get the email from them to say that you've signed up and they look after all of that in whatever country uh, you are listening at whatever level you want it. Now the premium partners of the show uh, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, uh, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, NationalCarCharging.com and AlohaCharge.com, and also Derek Riley from the EV Review Island YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you for Friday's show, and do remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>